he got us oh, again. Shit. He got us again. Oh, my, oh God. my God. God. Fuck I mean, me up, Colson. This is a book club. We're going to drink some alcohol. We're going to talk about some books. We're going to get a little petty. My guests are Debbie Millman, Open Mike Eagle, Mira Jacob, and I am Roxanne Gay. He used the word cement when he should have used concrete. Oh, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big thing for me. Okay. We're here to talk about The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. MacArthur winner, Guggenheim fellow, blah, 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 Pulitzer, whatever. He can also write, except for one thing, and we'll get into it. It's a coming of age story set in the Jim Crow era. It's about a young man who hitchhikes on his way to college, is arrested and goes to a reform school for boys, and his life changes forever. Oh God, this book. <laughs> <laughs> this book destroyed me. I was inconsolable at moments, experiencing the depth of his horror. I've never experienced a book that laid out what it means to have that rich of an internal life that runs counter to everything else that's around you. Like, that mirrored a lot of how I grew up. And that's really all you can ask for from a book. In the moments I was reading it, it did shut out the entire rest of the world. I was with this book completely. And I read it in one day. I just, yeah, me too. I just Thank went you. right through it. Yeah. Not a lot of books encourage me to keep reading. I will also say, reading that prologue and then getting to the part where it was 2014 mm -hmm. in the book, my heart sort of turned over on itself. It definitely was like a bookend. Like, yeah. ah, this is why we started where we started. Yeah. And I enjoyed it both as a reader because everything fell into place. Yes. And then as a writer, I was irate because <laughs> I was like, how <laughs> dare you be this good? Mm. Um, because I'm, I'm, I am petty enough to say it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Embrace your petty. <laughs> <laughs> I honor and nurture it. That's yeah. real. The worst thing that ever happened to Elwood happened every day. He woke in that room. That might be one of the most painful things about this book, that no matter how good he is, he it, goodness does not overcome racism, and it does mm -hmm. not overcome corruption. So I think it's really interesting, right, to build a narrative where you know that at least a good portion of the audience in America is gonna to come to this for a redemption story, mm -hmm. right? All the people that love Green Book wanna know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they wanna know which way, in which way is gonna affirm some part of our humanity so we can feel great about this story. And, and so he's running in the face of that. When they found the secret graveyard, he knew he'd have to return. Because here are these young men, boys really, children, who try to create a community for themselves and try to survive. And uh, there are these power-hungry assholes who are hell-bent on dimming whatever joy and sense of self that they develop while they're at this place. Nickel Academy is fictional in this novel, but there are Nickel Academies in every state. It's actually yep. based on a real place right. in yes, Florida. it is. So what would this story look like if it was set in 2019 and was flashing forward to 2040? It would look exactly the same. You think so? Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I think that's what actually made me so heartbroken. Mm -hmm. That this is a book set in the 1960s, but young black men are still being incarcerated in this manner. You prayed you didn't have a beating hanging over your head or that you'd been picked for a date on Lover's Lane. There's something that was really difficult for me to read uh, in this book that kept coming up, and it's touched on right there, but it's the sexual trauma. Which isn't ever touched on. Well, I feel like it is, it's touched on. I do feel like it's touched on enough. I feel like it, it gets revisited. It doesn't necessarily get unpacked. It doesn't ever get unpacked. That trauma, um, mm, that, that, I don't know, that was really visceral for me. And I do appreciate the subtlety of that because I do think all too often sexual violence is used as the only way I can think of to create drama is to throw in a rape scene. Right. The and Game of Thrones. Yes. He didn't do the Game of Thrones. He did not Game of Thrones it. Mm -hmm. His grandmother Harriet had a few gospel records, which she only played when the world discovered a new mean way to work on her. No book is perfect. Uh, the portrayal of women mm -hmm. in this book was not good. 
I thought the women were oftentimes very one-dimensional. They were backdrops for men to learn things about themselves. But it's agency too, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing that they want other than the men in their lives. Yes. He goes through the interiority of even the white men. And I was like, where is that for the women? Mm -hmm. The women get no, no interiority, interiority at, all. at all. But it's a book about a boy in a boy's school. Yes, but there are significant women in his life nonetheless. And those significant women deserve better than to be summarized with one or two words. I don't think that Harriet was summarized with one or two words. I think that Harriet was a very rich character. It's a note that we've seen so often. The long suffering, black woman who is the only mm -hmm. right yeah. only the the family that she's had and lost that she only knows suffering it's and it, it and that she's so noble in the face of that suffering like the strong black woman archetype is right. alive and well in this novel so subversive in so many other ways mm -hmm. It is kind of glaring that there was no subversion exactly. of the gender expectation. Exactly. Really. And I see this with a lot of the prominent black male writers. Black women come last in their narratives. We give it a pass because, I mean, look at what they're doing. Look at these towering achievements. What would be a towering achievement would be for these writers to step up and give black women some dignity in their pages. It's definitely a flawed novel, but it's just also this really satisfying story. I think flawed is too strong a word. My opinion is that there are some inconsistencies in some areas where it's thin as opposed to muscular, but I think it's breathtaking. And, and, and I echo the same sentiment. It just resonates with me on an emotional level in a way that not too many pieces of media ever have. So if you want to cry and feel emotionally devastated and otherwise obliterated, this is by your all means, <laughs> <laughs> the Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Let it fuck you up. <laughs>